One little settings change can often be the big difference maker for a player. It might make the game easier to play or a champion feel a lot easier to play. So in today's video, the Jizz is going to reveal 20 settings you need to use and abuse in Season 12, and these are settings that so many of the best players in the world use. Now, whether it's a hotkey setting or a video setting, we have got it all covered. So if you stick around for the next 10 or so minutes, I guarantee you that you will have the foundation you need to pop off in your games. Now, the first setting, turn your monitor on. Nah, I'm just joking, but it could actually help a lot of you out. So setting number 20, here we go. Quick cast your abilities. And the reason quick casting your abilities is such an important thing to do is because it just makes you cleaner. By having an indicator on, which is what lots of people do, it actually slows you down because you have to click again. Rather than playing instinctively and reacting to what your opponent is doing, just because you have to click again, this extra little bit of time you take in terms of league is a very long time indeed. And in most situations, once you actually cast that indicated ability, it's probably going to miss because the enemy champion is no longer in the position they were half a second ago. Now, if you're playing Rumble or Victor, Rumble's Ultimate and Victor's Death Ray, these are two abilities where you want to have your indicators on. But apart from that, quick casting your abilities is going to make you play so much better. Now, setting number 19, hotkeying normal cast. And basically, this is just assigning a hotkey for your normal cast. So for me, for example, and lots of other players, what they do is have the shift key assigned with their ability key. So shift in Q is a normal cast of your Q. Shift in W, shift in E, and shift in ultimate. So in some situations where you might want to know the range of your ability, or there's just like a 100% chance your ability is going to land, why not take all the guessing out of it so we can see exactly where our ability is going to go? And for more tips like the ones in this video, linked in the description and comment section is the Game Leap website where I challenge the players and coaches from around the world upload up to 20 videos a week for our subs, and we have thousands of them. So join the club so you too can get that exclusive access. Now, setting number 18 is shop pins. And when you open your shop, even players I've coached in like gold, platinum, and sometimes diamond don't have this setting turned on. So what you want to do, open your shop, and then these tabs on the left, you can actually pin these in the top left so they stay open every time you open your shop. This means that you can see all the early game items and all the boots there, so it just saves you time. Rather than having to move your mouse to hover over the arrow, we have this up instantly when we open the shop. Now, another setting regarding your shop, setting number 17, is the actual size of your shop. So if you go into settings and then interface, you can change the size of your shop. And this really comes down to personal preference. You might want it really small or really big. Maybe you're playing on a small laptop screen or maybe you're playing on a potato. This really depends on your screen size and probably how well you can see as well. Now, one of the more interesting settings in this video is number 16, and this is minimap size. And I'm not just going to recommend the minimap size in your interface settings in your actual game, because when you turn this to 100, yeah, it's kind of big, but not really that big. Like you've probably seen other players with huge mini maps. And the way you do this is by going into your Riot Games League of Legends folder and then going to your config folder and then persisted settings. Open this with a notepad and look for mini map scale. So for most people, this will probably still be on one, which means that when you go to 100% in the game settings, it's going to be 100% of the original size. But if you change this value in this notepad to two or three or four or five, that means the maximum size of the mini map can go up to 200% if the value is two, 300% if the value is three, and so on. So again, it really depends on how big you want your minimap. But I think a value of two or three, these are ideal. But you don't want to make it too big because you still want to obviously see what your champion is doing. But this is a setting that can help out so many people because looking at the minimap and understanding what is going on on the map, it contextualizes your game and gives you the information you need to make the best decisions possible. Now, another really important setting you have to have hotkeyed is the target champions only. Now, why would you have this hotkeyed? Well, have you ever been in a massive creep wave and you hit a minion instead of the enemy champion? Have you ever tried tower diving and instead of hitting the enemy champion, you hit the tower and get spam pinged? Well, to stop doing this, you can assign a key to the target champions only setting and you can do this by going into your hotkey settings, clicking on abilities and summoner spells and then scrolling down to target champions only. For me, this is on my C key, but it really depends on how your things are set up, I guess, and what is comfortable for you. So get into practice tool, practice with some key bindings, but make sure you have this hotkey. And another important point staying on this target champions only subject is to go into your settings and then game settings and scrolling down and ticking the treat target champions only as a toggle. What this means is that when you press your target champions only hotkey, you don't have to hold it down to actually activate it. You can just press it once and it will stay on indefinitely until you press it again. This for most people is just a lot easier to manage, so I'd recommend turning this one on as well. 
Now another really important setting coming in at number 14 is to disable your chat because who wants to see their Yasuo mid flaming you because you didn't gank them at level 2? Or who wants to see their AD carry flaming their support because they're not playing like mad life? So most of the time, if not all the time, having chat on doesn't actually get you closer to the enemy nexus. That's really the end goal in our game, so if it takes away from that, why not just disable it by going into your interface settings and scrolling down to the chat section and unchecking both of these chat options. But setting number 13 is related to the chat and you can see it on your screen now. This is showing timestamps because this is still really useful. If one of your teammates pings their opposing laner's flash or if you ping someone's teleport or summon a spell, it's really useful to know when that cooldown is going to be back up. This again is going to give you the most information possible so you can make the right play in that given moment. This is definitely going to land you more kills and wins so make sure you have timestamps turned on. Now setting number 12 is quite simply binding the shop. I know some people who even used to be in Challenger back in the day and they don't have their shop binded to a key. So what they have to do is move their mouse over to the shopkeeper, click on his head and that opens the shop. But what about if you're not in the shop and you're laning against someone or farming your camp, something like this, you want to know how much gold you need for your next item. So this is an absolute must. Now setting number 11 is favoriting champion. So what you can do, you can go into champ selects and you can favorite champions depending on the role. And by favoriting these champions, you can then sort by favorite as you can see from this drop down menu. So what what this does, out of all the 150 plus champions in the game, this just condenses and makes it a lot easier for you to select your champions of choice. So they will be the first champions you see, so if you do take a toilet break and come back and you've got two seconds to go, you can actually pick the champion you want to pick. So this setting, just like all the others, is here to make your life easier. Now setting number 10 isn't actually in the game itself, so what I want you guys to do is turn off mouse acceleration. And there are so many tutorials on the web teaching you how to do this, so whether you're playing on Windows or a Mac, it really doesn't matter. This is doable on anything. But the reason why we're doing this is because your mouse, the actual movements your cursor makes in game, will resemble more accurately the moves you're making with your hand on your mouse pad. This just means in terms of your accuracy, this will be improved. You'll be clicking on exactly what you want to click on. So if it's last hitting a minion or throwing a skill shot at an enemy champion, these are just going to hit with more regularity. So it's a really important setting to turn off. Now, another setting that is probably just underrated, this is turning your sound effects up because lots of us, whether you know it or not, actually respond to the sounds the enemy champions make. So you might think of an Orn ultimate, for example, but what it also does is it just gets your head in the game. So we're trying to embrace our inner Troy Bolton and get full on focus to what's in front of us. That is the most important thing in League of Legends, beating your opponent and having the sound effects up, it just forces you to focus on what's important. So definitely crank the sound effects up in your sound settings to improve your play. Now setting number eight is something we should all have down pat and this is using F keys. Now for some people, your F keys, they're so far away because most of us play with our fingers on Q, W, E and R. So moving our hand up a bit further to the F keys to so what you can do if it isn't F to do this is to change your F keys maybe to something like Z, X, C, and V. Or you could think about assigning the F keys to your mouse. If you've got one of those high tech mouses with 20 buttons, these will make your life easier panning your camera from teammate to teammate. Now, why is this so important? Well, it's a bit like the minimap scale. If you know what's going on in every single lane and what your jungler is doing, it gives you a really rounded perspective of the map and what's actually happening. So you can make the best decisions moving forward. For a jungler, it is essential you get this set up, but it's also really important for pretty much any role in the game, so make sure you do this. Now, setting number seven is simply toggling locked camera. And for lots of people who play on locked camera, I suggest not doing it. And the reason I don't like locked camera, particularly on champions with lots of mobility and champions with range, we want to be able to see our potential players and also the players of our opponents. So when you're playing on locked camera, your champion is in the middle of your screen. But most of the time, if not all the time, what you're going to be looking at is going to be in front of you. So any space behind your champion really doesn't mean anything. So really, you should only be locking your camera when you're champion gets a bit out of hand and you're a bit misplaced. This just resenters it quickly so you can then go ham again. So you can do this by going into your hotkey settings and then clicking on camera control and either assigning a key to center camper on champion or on toggle camera lock. Both do exactly the same thing but with camera lock you'll just have to press it again to unlock the camera. Now moving on to setting number 6, this is showing your spells costs, and this is super important for any champion in the game that uses mana or energy. So what this does by going into your interface settings and then checking this little box next to show spell costs, this is going to inform you of how much mana these spells cost, and because it will actually show this on your HUD, it's so close to the mana or energy bar that you really cannot go wrong, so you're instantly going to know if you can actually cast that spell or not. And it's also really useful if you're playing a champion like Zed, you will roughly know if you can use all 
all of your abilities for an all-in because you can quickly add up your spells costs and then make the best play because your judgment is a lot more accurate just because you know how much energy you're going to spend. Now another vital setting that is a must turn on, this is attack move on cursor and you can turn this on by going to your in-game settings and then scrolling down and then checking the attack move on cursor check mark. Now what this does is that when you attack move, your character is going to attack the closest thing to your cursor. So this means you don't have to be 100% accurate because as long as your cursor is near that target, it is going to hit that target. This just gives you a lot more compensation and this is something all the best players have turned on. So make sure you do the same. Now staying on this auto attack topic, setting number four is show attack range. And if you're playing a range champion in particular, knowing the attack range is vital to being able to master that range champion because your range is an inherent advantage. So if you don't know what you can auto attack around you, you really should just be playing a melee champion. So by clicking on show attack range in your interface settings, you get accustomed to that champion's range and over time you're just going to get so used to this attack range so you can play your champion as optimally as possible. Now another really cool setting is unchecking legacy cursor. So playing with the new cursor and the reason for doing this is because it makes your auto attacks and your attack moving so much easier to actually do. For whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but this circle when you press your attack key just looks so much cleaner than the original diamond kite shaped one. I don't know what it is, but lots of students who I've told to do this, they love this little indicator with the new cursor. And I understand that lots of people might already have this turned on, but if you are playing with the legacy cursor, turn it off and let me know what you think of the new indicator you get. Now setting number two is uncheck move on revive. So what this setting means is that when your champion is dead and as soon as it respawns in the fountain, your camera is going to move back to your champion, but who needs to move their camera back to their champion when they respawn? You know exactly where you're going to be and instead of looking at your champion in base, you can look at the map. And what's the advantage of doing this? Well, it just informs you of what's going on around you because when you respawn, you'll be full HP, full mana, all of these things are a given. We do not need to look at our champion to make sure that these things actually happen. Now, setting number one is a very general tip here in terms of your settings, but trust me, so many players in lower elos I've coached and even some players in higher elos, their mouse and camera speeds are just way too high. Not even Faker could control them. So what you're going to do, you're going to lower your mouse and camera speeds by a flat 10 each. And you might be like, 10, that is so excessive. I'm not going to be able to play the game. But trust me, so many people play in higher settings because they think it makes them better or mechanically sharper. It doesn't. The slower the speed, the more accurate your clicks are going to be and the more accurate your gameplay is going to be as a result. This is the main goal of the mouse and camera speeds, not to show off to your friends because you play on 100 mouse speed. And at the end of the day, you're still in gold. So no one who's really good at the game and in high relo cares about the mouse and camera speeds you have. Just use what is comfortable for you, but lowering this for most people, trust me, is going to help your gameplay. So those were the 20 settings, guys, that you need to turn on for season 12. Let me know by smashing that like button if you did enjoy the video, and also make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our future daily preseason and season 12 uploads. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the Jit.